Hey, I recently did a cover of Judith by a Perfect Circle with a bunch of uh, very talented people. Doc Coyle from Bad Wolves and from Vegas Nerve. Um, Aaron Bruck from Breaking Benjamin. Maytal Cohen from uh, YouTube. She's a very famous drummer. And um, Mark Valalunga, he's from Nothing More. Uh, it turned out really well. I'm very proud of it. I actually, not only did I do the vocals, but I did the mixing and the mastering of the track as well. And uh, I did the video editing too, because I want to be good at everything. <laughs> so, uh, so I uh, I wanted to go over my my mix and how I how I did the mix, um, just a little bit, and and give people more insight into how I mix and uh, how I process my vocals and things like that. So, um, without further ado, duty pants, let's try to do some of this. I'm not going to go too far into it because I don't want to, you know, have like a 40 minute. <laughs> thing here but um but yeah let's see some of the processing i did and um and how i how i turned this out how i churned this out all right here we go all right so let's see we'll start off here with the drums and hopefully i just got this working enough so that i can hopefully um do these things at the same time and um record my voice at the same time and all that kind of stuff so let's see let's check out the drums first um i do have some triggers here but mostly I wanted to keep as much of a real drum sound as I could, or at least her real drum sound. So that's pretty much the raw drum sound with, they, they didn't have any rooms and I don't have any kind of uh, compressor or anything else happening right there. Um, so let's, uh, Let's hear the whole thing. I have a snare compressor just to kind of smash the snares a little bit more that I'll throw in. I did the same thing for the toms as well because I needed them to cut through the mix quite a bit. Then we have um, an extra crusher for the whole drum mix. And we have a snare verb, another snare verb, a drum verb, and a drum verb. These are basically creating a fake room for me. So this is what it sounds like. <laughs> So anyway, yeah, those extra rooms really help quite a bit. Uh, my overheads, I think they're a little bit too harsh, but, you know, I tried to work with what I could uh, work with. Another weird thing, too, is that um, I kept getting thrown off because I didn't know, but Maytal has her hats over here, but then when she opens the hats to go to, like, double kick and stuff, she has another pair of hats over here. So I kept wondering what the hell happened. Like, Where did the hats go, man? So um, that's what's going on. Anyway, so I use mostly Slate plugins and uh, Universal Audio plugins. And this is all I'm really doing with the, um, the overheads, except for some EQ and then this Soothe. So we got our virtual channel. We got a little bit of EQ. Um, doesn't look like I was doing too much. It looks like I was doing something, just cutting out a little bit of the, uh, the lower frequencies there. Got an EQ here, boosting some of the lows, getting rid of some of the muddy area, boosting some of the highs. And then this Soothe, if you don't have this plug in, this thing is badass. This thing kind of gets rid of all the uh, upper transients that just annoy your ears and suck. So let's keep moving on. We got a hi-hat, which like I just talked about, we're not going to really get into. Um, let's hear some of these by themselves. We got, I think he's got three kicks that he's recorded on this so eh, let's get over here sorry so we got our first kick so that's the inside of the that's the inside of the kick drum um sounds pretty good uh i boosted the top end a lot boosted the bottom a little bit didn't really get it rid of any of the mud i guess i didn't really see too much didn't compress it too heavily either. And then we have a little bit more EQ here and this thing thickens up the bottom end. So then I left some of the things, I, I had a guy that um, was originally doing the mix and then everybody wanted to go with my mix. So so um, yeah, I left some of the stuff he did because I just didn't want to mess with things too much. It looks like he was, excuse me, um, either EQing things or compressing them. I've used that before, but I don't remember. And then I have no idea what the hell he was doing there. So we have a kick outside. Let's see what that sounds like. So it sounds like a kick outside. Much more flubby and uh, soft, but...
Not adding too much. Then we got a knock, which I'm not too familiar with, but... Okay, that's nice. It gives us a little bit of thud on the outside there. So all together... So then we added... He added a kick sample. I didn't add my own kick sample. Let's see what that sounds like. All right, so it gives some stereo spread, and it sounds totally different, but um, together. Definitely adds a lot of nice room sound. So her original snare is um, kind of highly tuned, but I, I like it a lot. Um, it wasn't necessarily going to work too much with the song because it sounds so freaking powerful and uh, heavy, but uh, let's hear it. That's a high snare. Some of the similar stuff. I love this Distressor plugin by Slate. I use it all the time on almost everything. So I'm boosting some of the different frequencies here. I'm boosting, just boosting everything. And we got his channel strip again doing God knows what. <laughs> I use this on all kinds of stuff now. I use this on um, vocals, um, bass, everything I can because it's just freaking awesome. So that's uh, the Neve, I think, what is it, 1073. Um, fantastic. Um, and I just put on presets, snare top. Put it on tape with the slate tape plug in and then um this is what he originally had on it so i just left it there because he knows her drums better than me and then it looks like i was trying to bring out some beef so once again uh what do we got here we got a trigger that i put on by slate steven slate so let's hear the trigger so you can Definitely tell that's going to sound a lot more like the song because it's just big and compressed. And ka -ka 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 -ka. <laughs> Let's hear a snare bottom. So we got some nice snares on the bottom there. Let's hear those two together. And then let's hear our trigger. So now he had originally had two snare samples on it too. Just we're just adding samples and more samples, so which I'm not really a big fan of, but let's hear what those sounded like. I mixed those in as well so that they were stereo. So let's hear the first one. And the second. So he was definitely that sounds actually um down tuned. It sounds like he was really doing that to add some beef. So uh, let's listen to them all together. That's pretty nice. Um, then I always add this. This is actually a Stephen Slate trick that I learned by watching the Slate digital videos. Um, just compressing them all together and just being able to add this in definitely helps. I'll show you with and without it. So definitely bringing out those ghost notes quite a bit. Now, I did not add any triggers to her toms. I left them this, the way that they are. She does have five toms, two floor toms, and then three up on the top. So um, let's find a spot where we can find where she's playing those. So, um, you know, I, I think it's an okay recording. Um, a little thuddy. I didn't do too much to them. Um, once again, similar processing. He had Soothe on all of them. I'm not ne necessarily sure why, but I didn't touch them. Here we're boosting some of the attack from the stick, definitely compressing them. But the thing that I did that really helped there is a similar trick to the snare forces that we, we, um, we compressed it. So I'll show you with and without it. So it definitely cuts through one more time. So in terms of this mix being as heavy as it is, we definitely needed something like that to cut through. Then, uh, same thing again, we're side chaining or, or bussing, I'm sorry, um, all this stuff to a crush and other compressors so that we can bring that up. And then, like I said, we got our snare verbs. I'm using Slate Digital's uh, uh, snare plate and probably another snare plate just to keep, yeah, fat plate. <laughs> 
And then, uh, like I said, we didn't have any room mics, or she didn't have any room mics when, when they sent this over, so I went with their realistic full drum room one and two. So that's basically what you're hearing with the drums, just to keep things short and sweet. So let's move on to Aaron's bass. Now, he sent me uh, an amp, whether it was actually a recorded amp or just, um, you know, something inside of his doll or whatever. Uh, it sounded really badass. I like it a lot. So here's the DI bass. Let's start here at the beginning. So you can tell I definitely boosted the top quite a bit. Compressor here, the stressor. Um, didn't have to bring things out too much because I, I freaking love this by Universal Audio. Um, this came along free with my Apollo, and I, I didn't even know it existed. And then when I found it, I was like, oh, my God, you can really boost the highs and lows with this thing. And it just really gives uh, a really nice, um, a really nice sound. So if I bypass it. So you see what what's that what that magic is doing it's fantastic so here's his amped version so pretty harsh but we needed it to be harsh to cut through the ridiculousness of this mix and the guitars and stuff so definitely boosting some more high end so you can hear them the strings and then getting some of that low end here that what they sound like together So yeah, I must have needed to bring that amp up to really get it to cut through. Then uh, next we got Doc's guitars. Now what he sent me, what these guys did is they, they sent me a stereo thing of both. Uh, I, I kind of was confused of what they were sending me at first, but um, they sent me kind of kind of like doubled or, or kind of like an amp side of, I don't even know. Let's listen to it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I think Doc's is... is played twice but it's um processed by two different sources so his were a little muddy when i got them um because they're really kind of pulling into that seven string territory of blah, 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 you know genty type thing so his left i put one on the left and one on the right to really create some stereo separation and try to get everything to sit right So right out of the gate, you can definitely tell there was quite a bit of mud. You can tell I just got rid of some of the stuff down here. Also compressing. Let's listen to the right side. So you hear that bottom end is just crushing and coming through, and uh, I definitely need to get rid of some of that. Here's what they sound like together. They're really holding the rest of the song up with the bass. So anyway, yeah, definitely working in tandem with the bass. Not standing out too much, but that's because we needed good old Mark stuff to stand out up here. Now Mark's were a little bit similar um but not quite as low and punchy and um and yeah you know we got all these different high parts and everything so let's go up here i should also mention that his file setup was different i normally don't have everything looking the way it does so it's quite confusing for me to go through that guy's file that originally mixed this or mixed her drums and then sent everything over and then i just tried to work in his files so let's see we got mark's left And Mark's right. So I processed these similarly with uh, a little bit of mud taken out, a little bit of highs on Mark's here. Same thing here. We're using a heavy guitar lever leveler. Um, I usually use a lot of presets because I didn't go to school for this stuff and I 
do everything at the same time and it gets to be a little too much sometimes so <laughs> being able to pick a preset is is very nice <laughs> So, sounds really nice, actually. Uh, let's go. Let's see. What else we got? We got my vocals, which I'll get into here next. But anyway, let's let's listen to those guitars together. And then we'll put the bass in at the same time. We got Doc again. Here's with the bass. So it sounds pretty decent. Uh, all right, we got piano at the end here. I've been using this piano. It's one of the best pianos I've found in terms of, um, you know, what kind of sound it's giving you for the fact that it's not a real piano. So I'll show you that. A pretty simple part that I played at the end. Um, Doc actually came up with that end part, and then Mark went full bananas and wrote some really cool stuff here at the end. Um, it looks like my piano may have moved. And now it's not working. So we're just going to skip over the piano. <laughs> but it sounds <laughs> it sounds really nice. If you, uh, if you look into that, it's like I said, I've tried a lot of these um, piano plugins and stuff with MIDI. And this is one of the better ones I've found. It's called the CXS or CFX Concert Grand. I think it's about 100 or 200 bucks. Let's get into my vocals. So any vocals that I've done in the past couple years um, have been pretty much processed about the same way and the way I set them up is um, we're looking over here I usually have my reverb everything's bust in my reverb then I usually have a delay and then I have a faster delay and then I have this thing called air where um, it's a doubler a double effect I've I've had this for so many years I don't even I don't even know really what setting this is on I just keep importing it from session to session because uh a guy did it a long time ago that worked on my first album, and I, I love it. It adds a stereo separation to the vocals and um, really helps out quite a bit. So if we come out here to the first vocals right here, let's listen to it with, I guess we can just listen to it regularly. Um, we got some mic here, well, this is probably like a 47, um, trying to bring out a little bit more, probably you know, different transients than, than whatever I was using. I think I was using a, a Shure 7B, but um, I still might have wanted a little bit of a different sound, so. You're such an inspiration for the ways that I will never, ever choose to be. So you can definitely tell I'm compressing the living shit out of it. We got the Neve here, just set to vocal. Um, really adds a warmth. I'll show you the difference if I can turn that off. You're such an inspiration for the ways that I will never ever... So backed off a little bit of the higher transients and then actually thickened it up quite a bit. Uh, cap Decapitator. A lot of metal people know this. I am not a metal guy, but um, this thing will add some like distorted uh, saturation. And for heavier songs, it's fantastic, especially once I start pushing into the, the vocal getting louder. It, it, it gives a little bit of distorted sound. So that's what that is. We got Soothe. Once again, to, it's fantastic on vocals, especially when I get into a higher range. This stuff starts blowing up right around 2 and 4K, and it sounds like crap. And then when that thing came out, I was like, oh my god, this is fantastic. So let's hear what it sounds like with my little uh, effects over here. You're such an inspiration for the ways that I will never ever choose to be. So let's hear it. Let's hear it without the air and with it in, because I, like I said, I love having this in. You're such an inspiration for the ways that I will never ever choose to be. So you can hear it bring in all kinds of great stuff. So with the vocals, then. I doubled my screams, probably similar to the song. Let's hear those. I'll just play them both at the same time. So you can hear me yell at people. Fuck your god! So I probably backed up the, or brought up the whole um, decapitator thing a little bit more in those to give it a little bit more distortion. Fuck your god! Your Lord, your Christ. Hey! 
I did this! Yeah, you can definitely hear it's it's given a little bit more. I'll turn it off though so you can hear me. Fuck your god! He did this! So it's about the same anyway. I was I was definitely screaming. <laughs> And Soothe, the plugins once again, those are all hanging out there as well. Let's continue. I think I doubled up the the chorus. A lot of times people get really ignorant and confused and they're like, oh, but I can sing with autotune. I'm not using autotune. I have. We all have. Um, sometimes it's a very nice tool to have, especially if, if you don't feel like recording a backup vocal and you realize there's a problem or something. But I'm normally pretty against, not a big fan of it. I do not like people using it very heavily. It, it just is very robotic and gets rid of the, the feel of the vocal or the emotion. So um, this is the chorus. And like I said, it's just the same vocal if you don't understand how this stuff works. A lot of people do this. They'll go from the verse and have a single vocal to the chorus and they sing the lines a bunch of times, but they'll put the double or one of the same lines underneath of it to add more beef. They do it with guitars. People do it with everything. It's not like you killed someone It's not like you drove a hateful spirit into a sign Praise the one who left you broken down and paralyzed he, he did it all for you now Let's go to uh, Let's go to this one see what's happening here. It's just some more vocals for you Pride! To your Christ, to your God, never Taste of the fruit Never stray, never break, never So God alive Even though and Then we got another chorus and then Now of course we got the ending screams uh, These screams are not easy to do um, I was having a lot of vocal problems as well Even when I was trying to do this So some of this stuff was just not working well Um but either way, I'm, I'm starting to get my voice back, and I'll talk about that in another video. But we can listen to those with and without the the uh, effects. He did it all for you! So just, just for shits, let's listen to it with the effects. He did it all for you! Um, and if you do have any questions, I'll, I'll be happy to try to answer it in the, the comments. Um, there's a lot going on here. I was pretty much mastering at the same time as mixing and, and trying to go back and forth, which isn't always the best idea, but I have my ways of doing things, so you can kiss my ball. All right, um, so the guy that I was I was mixing up against, once again, I'm not a competitive person, but I didn't care for his mix so i wanted to make sure that i could do something that everybody was happy with in terms of the instrumentation and everything like that as well as my vocals i needed my vocals to sit right in the mix so he slammed and just completely compressed the shit out of the song and people get confused when they hear something that's louder even if something that's quieter is way better they usually tend to and my, myself included sometimes they tend to go to the louder thing because it just seems to sound better um and that's not usually the case, or that's not always the case. Um, so either way, I was like, all right, I'll smash my track too. And ultimately it kind of worked out. So um, everybody that uses Slate plugins is usually familiar with this. I put this on aggressive. We have it turned the whole way up, which I know I don't, I never do. Um, I usually use this in the presets and put on mix bus. This is another virtual mix bus console sound. Um, sometimes they boost the highs and lows. I guess I didn't boost anything. I just didn't turn it off. Um, this B FG Bomber adds a lot of great um, low end and, and punchiness, so I kept that in there. This is the multi band that I usually use. Um, I usually use the basic multi under presets, and that gives me my limiting and gives me all these kind of in a setup in a way that I like to use them. I usually always scoop a lot of this down here. And I'll let you see what it looks like. He did it all for you! So I'm not, not necessarily hitting anything too hard, but then again, we added another one. <laughs> he did it all for you! So 
So really getting a lot of volume out of that. Then we put the whole thing on tape. Now, sometimes this tape thing uh, from Slate can be rather subtle, but in this case, uh, man, I would just change the different tape settings and find all kinds of different sounds. So um, this is what I ended up going with. Um, if you haven't tried this, once again, if you haven't tried Slate's plugins, they're, they're some of the best. EQ, got rid of a little bit of the highs, boosted a little bit of that kick drum. EQ again, I must have went with a plug-in and put it on mastering rock. So um, sometimes these presets will just do good things for you and you don't have to screw with them too much. So see that they were doing a bunch of different things. I must have, I think I dropped that out probably once again, not liking some of those two to four or five K areas, um, but getting, you know, some of the highs back, some of that kick again, soothe on the whole track. I love using that. It's fantastic. This is what I use to get my track to the full volume get a little bit more of this punchiness and make sure that it is at the volume it needs to be at. You see, we're right in that magic realm. I've been using this so long that I, I struggle sometimes to use other ones because I'm so used to looking at this. So this is what I'm looking at in terms of the other people's track you know the original track and such and then trying to mimic the the eq values and things like that so um so hopefully i didn't fumble my way through this too bad i haven't done one of these before and like i said i i knew i was going to have some cpu error problems and things of that nature but um that and that's my dog <laughs> snoring <laughs> um but yeah that's um that's basically what i did hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight into how this stuff works for me or how I set up my files or how I tend to use my plugins. Like I said, Slate Digital, I was working on my, my fourth album in 2018 and um, just really struggling. My light's going to go off. And um, <laughs> and uh, really struggling. And then they, um, somebody, I think the guy that mixed our Vegas Nerve record uh, was posting some of these things about slate digital and then i downloaded some demos and then i was like uh watching videos on how to use them and they they will tell you how to use all their plugins and i just learned so much and i've i've never i can never go back to trying to just fumble with all these other plugins and things like that and i just i just go right to their plugins and know exactly what to do and what to turn and everything and it's it's fantastic so that really changed my my mixing life and then universal audio yeah if you buy if you have the money to buy something from um universal audio and then you get some of their plugins or you start getting into their plugins i mean literally the the best you're gonna find um so anyway thanks for joining me on this sorry i'm in the dark <laughs> but yeah i'm trying to get better at this trying to get more professional at, at doing all this stuff and, and giving people tips on how to how to you know mix and how to uh, sing and all those things so subscribe if you like my what i'm doing here and i will be talking to more of you soon have a good day okay bye